The Jedi Knight games may not be the most popular Star Wars game series out there, but to those who did grow up with them, they left such an impact that they often end up on people's top 10 lists for Star Wars games. Being an early Doom clone, being the first set of games to introduce a lightsaber in a meaningful way, and then by the end fully realizing the Jedi Power Fantasy. This is going to be my final video on the series. My long overdue final video on the series, jeez. But I want to focus on the bigger picture, looking at the series as a whole, seeing how it relates to the bigger zeitgeist and how it'll be remembered for years to come. And I'll conclude with how my relationship with the games have changed, or to be more precise, how I have changed. I always had a fond memory of the games I spent a lot of my childhood playing. I mean, who doesn't? People had their Marios, their Crashes, their Sonics and Dooms, but we, my family, didn't have that luxury in Thailand. Not only were Nintendo and other consoles hard to find, but gaming only really started booming with the PS2 launch. And since my dad was a fan of the Star Wars films and had a PC in the 90s, he ordered games from the only franchise he was comfortable with. That's right, Star Wars. I'll never forget the first opening minutes of Dark Forces, and I don't think I need to explain why in depth the later games had such an impact on my childhood. Being able to gun down and cut down enemies was something any kid, fan of Star Wars or not, was going to enjoy immensely. And me using cheat codes just made the games insanely more fun, since I got to do all of that without being punished. If I got lost, i just punch in the level skip cheat. The joy of experiencing Star Wars in video game form, becoming a Jedi Knight, and having a pretty painless experience is why it's held such a special spot for me as a kid. But nostalgia doesn't always line up with reality. <laughs> Yep, it didn't age well. What I thought was going to be a joy through memory lane turned out to be an interesting mixed bag. I've already gone through each game in depth, but let's just address the overarching strengths and weaknesses of the series. The love design that confuses and overstays its welcome. I can't count how many times I was enjoying the hacking and slashing segment, only to then have that joyride be interrupted by the level design. Fun encounter? Stumped to where to go next. Fun encounter? Stumped to where to go next. Fun encounter? Mind-numbing puzzle sequence. Rinse and repeat. And when it's not the puzzle-like dungeon level design, it's the levels being more padded than the Joker's Asylum cell. <laughs> levels that feel like they should have been over at least 20 or 30 minutes ago, at the very least, just seems to go on. Weighing me down and eventually making me ask, what am I even doing? How is this even relevant to the objectives or story? Second, it's the difficulty spikes. While most of these games are a decent challenge, there's just way too many points in the games, whether at the start, midpoint, or finale, where it suddenly feels way harder than it should. A 3 life system in a 50 minute long punishing final mission. Bosses that are tougher than the final boss like this gremlin. A midpoint that punishes you for using a lightsaber as soon as you get it? All of these problems, of course, tie back into the pacing. I found it incredibly hard to stay engaged and care about what's going on when I'm not making progress because of the level design or punishing difficulty. That and these games did fall into a repetitive rhythm rather than excite and keep things feeling fresh. Now, on to the good. 
In spite of my many, many, many issues, the core combat, be it the blasters in the older games, or the lightsaber in the newer ones, it's still a hell lot of fun, and it's made all the better with the satisfying and expressive death animations. When the game zone put up roadblocks and just lets you have fun with all the weapons and abilities, it still slaps almost 20 to 30 years later. So there's nothing really wrong with the combat itself. The problem is whether the developers create the ideal conditions to complement the combat. And it's why Jedi Academy is the best designed and structured game of the series. That wasn't so bad. The lightsaber is always a blast to use throughout the six hour experience. You get new styles and abilities to play with. And most importantly, the game doesn't waste your time with puzzles and mind-numbing levels. I can say it's aged the best and I had a good time overall with it. And even if I didn't consistently enjoy the series, there's still quite a lot to admire here. As someone who just wants Star Wars to move on and do something new rather than drown itself in fan service, I still think the whole expanded universe in these games are cute. Impressing Darth Vader at the end of Dark Forces. The Force is strong with Katarn. Having Luke Skywalker fight besides you against the Empire. <laughs> playing as fan favorite Mara Jade. Throwing in the different lightsaber styles. And self-inserting yourself as a Jedi is just undeniably cute. I can imagine a lot of the kids and teens seeing Star Wars in the 70s and 80s finally participating and inserting their own stories and building upon the Star Wars Expanded Universe during the 90s and 2000s. Now, that's not to say that I want new Star Wars by Disney to go down the self-referential rabbit hole. Like, I know, what matters at the end is if it's well written and executed well, but I really would love Star Wars to branch out and do new things rather than rehash popular characters because iconic TM. So there, those are my thoughts on the Jedi Knight series. A lot of poorly aged design decisions, but also quite a bit to admire and enjoy when it's handled well. But what about the bigger picture? There's oddly nothing like the Jedi Knight games now. Even though the series sold pretty well, and often takes a spot in people's top 10 Star Wars games list, why aren't there games like these anymore? After the Jedi Knight games, we got The Force Unleashed, which plays more like God of War. Then we got Jedi Fallen Order, that plays like the popular Soulsborne games, which is all about stamina management and knowing when to go in for the kill. Now, the Fallen Order comparison makes more sense here because Let's be honest, the Force Unleashed treated the lightsaber more like a baseball bat. Both Jedi Fallen Order and the Jedi Knight games focus on duels and the lethality of the lightsabers, to varying degrees. And people have made comparisons between the two series, some saying the Jedi Knight games have the better combat system. Now, of course, this is all preferences, but let's compare and contrast, specifically the lightsaber combat systems and maybe see why we don't see games like Jedi Outcast and Academy anymore. When it comes to the freedom and flow, the Jedi Knight games just hit it out of the park. You have an incredible degree of player control and movement in these games. The direction and type of swing depends on your movement, whether you're moving back, forward, left or right. Duels overall are these anarchic, hectic clashes where both parties just swing wildly, trying to land their lightsabers on the unprotected weak points they can't block. As for Jedi Fallen Order, if I had to describe it, I'd say it's meticulous, more methodical, and by no means is that bad, because there is something extremely rewarding to carefully dealing with enemy composition. No, you can't brute force your way and slice up every enemy by spamming the attack button, because you're gonna get punished hard for that. It's kinda less about quick reflexes and twitchy gameplay, and more about thoughtful approaches to tackling the enemy combatants. And because you have a stamina bar, there's only so much you can do before you run out and go in for the attack again. It's hard for me to choose which I prefer. I just love cutting through mobs of enemies in such an adrenaline rushing way. 
but I also love being more strategic and solving these puzzles in the form of enemies. So I can't really say which one I prefer the most. Now when it comes to the boss fights though... I'm sorry, but the Jedi Fallen Order games just surpassed the Jedi Knight series in every way. The boss fights in the Jedi Knight series never were a strong point in the games. They're basically those dark Jedi duels, but if the enemies had a ton more health. And it's just not as interesting. Now there are a tiny few boss fights that try to change things up, like the boss fight with Wash, where you're supposed to take out Dumb and Dumber here before they can heal him, but the vast majority are just these Saber Spongy duels. Meanwhile, the boss fights in Jedi Fallen Order, how they have patterns and different phases you need to adapt to, make the clashes more memorable and thoughtful rather than mindless. That said, I don't think the reason why we don't see more games like the Jedi Knight games anymore is because one system happens to be better than the other, but the Soulsborne direction just seems to work better for the kind of game they wanted to make with Jedi Fallen Order. And people nowadays just really love the Soul style combat, where you have to be more methodical and economical with your fighting. Of course, there's a lot more to why Souls is popular, but I'm just focusing on the combat system and why it's becoming the standard for action adventure games. Something else we don't see anymore is the expanded universe, now that Disney is in charge. <laughs> To be fair, I don't even really know much about the current Disney Expanded Universe, besides Jedi Fallen Order, Battlefront, and this one book I really loved called Lost Stars. And from my limited exposure, they really have felt more restrained than the original Expanded Universe, but I don't think I know enough to really compare the two, with me knowing a lot more about the original Expanded Universe. Now originally, I wanted to talk about the Jedi Knight novels, but given how it's three books and there's a ton to like about them, I'll just say, it deserves its own video someday. But as a treat, it's really good. It's the best possible story to give to Kyle Katarn. It is a shame that the games never come close to the level of character development and emotions the books were able to capture. Hell, one of the things I loved about the books was that we learned why Kyle joined the Empire. It's always hinted in the games that he was an ex-Imperial. Katarn was once an impressive Imperial officer but he was weak and gave up on the struggle for our new order. But we never knew why he joined. And so we find out why in the books. It's because his dad regrets not being financially successful enough to give Kyle a future beyond subsistence farming. And basically, the Empire was just a way out of poverty. But again, it deserves its own video. I guess the last thing I could bring up is that we were supposed to get a proper finale to Kyle's journey, Originally, instead of Jedi Academy, we were supposed to get a game after Jedi Outcast to close off his story called Star Wars Jedi Knight Brink of Darkness. And well, unfortunately there's no other details about it besides what I've said. If I had to guess why it was never greenlit, maybe it was hard to design a game where we start off as a Jedi Master at that point. Master Katarn, it's an honor to be serving under you. Usually in games, you go from zero to hero, with some titles doing the, well, yes, you are powerful, but... Yoink. Not anymore. But who knows. Another problem could have been that Jedi Academy was just way more appealing of a concept to work on because, you know, self-insert Jedi Power Fantasy and all. Regardless, I have to say, it is a bit of a shame that the Jedi Knight games never had much of an impact on the bigger picture, compared to Knights of the Old Republic and others. We also don't see games like these anymore, and we never really got closure on Kyle Katarn's story. I mean, besides him just being some teacher at the Academy, which isn't that riveting. I really wanted to see what they had in mind for Kyle with that cancelled game. The only people who seem to remember the Jedi Knight games are people like me who grew up playing them in the 90s and early 2000s. 
While at best, Jedi Academy has more of a following likely due to its concept and indulgent appeal. But I can't really blame the newer generations on the lack of popularity. Not only are there arguably better Star Wars games out there, maybe more polished on the gameplay side and hit people harder with the writing, but almost all these games from Jedi Knight were designed for a more quote-unquote hardcore audience who enjoy or don't mind the old-school labyrinthine level design, difficulty spikes, puzzles, and more. But it is safe to say that the Jedi Knight games will be remembered for being the first to more or less realize the lightsaber as a satisfying and deadly weapon, finally bringing it from the big screen to the hands of the players. And isn't that what Jedi Knight ultimately is about? Serving as a wish fulfillment fantasy? Don't you wish you can be the one who stole the Death Star plans? This is too easy. Mow down legions of stormtroopers? Punch big dragon monsters? Save the day? Thanks, I thought I was done no for. No time for hugs. Let's get out of here. And of course, the later games had the lightsaber. Spam the mouse button. Spam, spam. Ah, oh, nice. I think the wish fulfillment aspect is what the Jedi Knight series will be remembered for. And with that all said, it brings me to the final chapter. I think the biggest thing I got out of this from revisiting these games wasn't really realizing that these games age poorly or changed. It's just me who's changed. When I went back into these games, I originally thought I'd rekindle my fond childhood memories. Yes, that sadly didn't turn out to be as rosy as I hoped it to be. And maybe my expectations were so high from seeing people do retrospectives on these games, but what I came out from all of this was seeing how much I've changed as a gamer and even as a fan of Star Wars. First, how have I changed as a gamer? Well, on the obvious side, I've played games with better gunplay and level design where, by and large, games have gotten better at highlighting and nudging you where to go by using tricks like lighting in Half-Life 2, which came out a year after Jedi Academy. I also think the Jedi Knight games reinforces a version I had to padded and confusing levels, something I noticed when I played the Soul Style games. Loved the game when it was directed, linear, and had you pushing through an important story beat and the stakes were high. But then I was bummed out when they had you just exploring and trying to figure out where to go, grinding away at enemies that just respawn and littered a huge map. Something else I realized in the past few years was that I don't really care much about difficulty anymore. Now, I remember trying to play every game on hard mode, and up till like 2018, I didn't mind dying over and over again, because I just wanted to feel the sense of overcoming some big challenge. The sense of skill and accomplishment mattered more than anything else. Story, characters, pacing, all that. And then in the past few years, I started becoming more and more frustrated by not making any progress and feeling like I'm wasting my time. I thought you were supposed to be a Jedi Knight. And that also includes the love of design. I don't want to be a waste of my time being lost. And that segues to the pacing, how engaged it was during the experience. It's clear that the older games weren't really focused on pacing, no game from this time really. What mattered to every game back then was stuffing as much content possible on the disc, telling a satisfying and tight story with structure and emotional beats and having action-packed set pieces was never really a thing until like the 2010s or so. And sure, it's less the game's fault, and just my own sensibilities changing over the years. It's how I've changed as a gamer. I just like more directed, tighter games that don't overstay their welcome. So with that said, that then leaves me with how much I've changed as a Star Wars fan. Even though I am disappointed that these games haven't lived up to my expectations all these years later, but I just can't get mad at Star Wars now. Train yourself to let go. No, not because I love everything but the franchise. Hell, I only really love theater films, and the rest I either don't care for much, or were just fine, well-made flicks. No, 
I just can't get that upset over the Jedi Knight games because as flawed as they are, with neither one of them ever being consistently good in the story, difficulty, level design, and so on, just like the movies, they all were inconsistent in quality too. And the films, even the ones I love, usually had noticeable flaws. But still, offered something good or at least interesting to take from. And that was more or less my experience with the Jedi Knight games. No, I didn't experience a New Hope, Empire Strikes Back, or Last Jedi experience here. But I certainly got something out of them all. So with that all said, I have to thank the Jedi Knight series for letting me come out of them with something interesting to talk about and allowing me to reflect on how much I've changed since I played these games. I'm Sam Blips, and thanks for watching. I want to thank my Patreon supporters, LD Claudius and Nati for backing me on Patreon. If you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing to me on YouTube, and if you can, support me on Patreon, even a dollar is well appreciated. We also have a Discord group in the description. I will be making a video about the future of the channel starting in 2022, so stay tuned for that. Have a good one, and Happy New Year.